What is going on, everybody? I want to share with you an Iron Hands army I created. This army has 90 strength 5 AP2 shots, rerolling ones to hit, plus some other goodies in there. So let's dig right in. It is very hard to get 13 command points with a Primaris Space Marine army, but we're not supporting the non Primaris units, so bear with it. Now, if you need to shave off some points, the easiest way to do that will be switch out some Primaris stuff for some non Primaris stuff, and you'll save some points there. But let's jump in. We have four HQs that are going to be split up into two battalions. Primaris Captain, Librarian, Primaris Lieutenant, and Iron Daddy Pharos. That guy is a beast. He's going to be in every Iron Hands army because he does everything you need him to do. And he's an awesome tech marine. So great auras, great abilities. You know that. You've seen the videos. Uh, the Primaris Captain... I'm a little on the fence. This whole army is basically rerolling ones to hit. I don't know if I need to reroll those twos. Of course, if I'm coming up against some minus to hit type armies, yes, I want the captain there. Upgrade them to the chapter master. I'm going to include the captain in my army because I want to experiment with a lot of the stratagems and with the 13 command points and having a variety of characters and a variety of units. I get to play with the stratagems and I think this is going to be a really good army. Uh, for your weekend at the game store, but also just to learn your new book, right? There's so many stratagems in these two books that you use and having a lot of command points to play with, it's just gonna get you in that mindset. Then after you get a few games in, you know, maybe you could tone it down. Maybe you only need eight command points and you can make it work, right? And then you'll save points because you need less troops. So those are our HQs. The Lieutenant, I like the idea of spending a command point on him and giving him the Haywire bullets on his Stalker bolt rifle. Basically, if he hits a vehicle on a 4+, plus, it takes D3 mortal wounds, and on a 6, it takes 3 wounds mortal. So he's like a little smite guy, right? His bolter turns into a little smite gun almost, which is pretty sweet for a Lieutenant that's basically just standing around giving people reroll ones to wound. The Librarian is a good candidate for either the plus one psychic power relic, which is in the Space Marine book. Uh, we'll give him three psychic powers. There are definitely three that are pretty good in the Iron Hands uh, school of psychic powers. Technomancy, I believe. <laughs> right, so uh, that one's worth it. Uh, somebody needs to take the Iron Stone and you know, just the aura of minus one damage to your vehicles, gonna be awesome. We are going to include three Redemptor Dreadnoughts. I love Dreadnoughts. I think they're cool. They used to have like 13 of them. I got rid of all of them. And now I got three Redemptors. Uh, one of them, because I paid full price, has the Plasma Gun. And I think that's a good thing. And two of them are going to be a Heavy Gatling Gun. And then, of course, they're all going to have Gatling Guns. And upgraded with the Anti-Aircraft Icarus Rocket Pods. The reason I'm going with the plasma gun, the macro plasma incinerator, is two things. One, I have one dreadnought model that I can put it on, and I'll probably magnetize them. And if you want to save a point, you can go with the heavy Gatling gun. Uh, and actually, when I said I had 90 um, strength 5 AP2 shots, I was thinking I had the Gatling gun on this guy. But I actually have the macro plasma gun on him. This gun is you're overcharging it and you wound yourself on a one, but there is a psychic power that can give a unit plus one to hit. So your ones become twos and you do not suffer mortal wounds. So he's a good candidate for that, but also he's rerolling ones built in. He's possibly rerolling all misses near the captain. Uh, it's just, he's not gonna take that many wounds and this army can heal through Iron Daddy and the psychic power we're going to take. So even if he takes a few wounds, you can heal him back up next turn, assuming he lives. And I think he's going to live because I think your opponent's going to shoot the next units. We're taking two repulsors, heavy onslaught, little onslaught, double twin, and Icarus pods. And you basically have to shave off a little bit of the frag storm and iron hail heavy stubbers. And that is just because to get this into 2,000 points. 
So we got three repulsors, or three dreadnoughts, two repulsors, thinking five vehicles that are all standing around our little character group. It's kind of like Space Marine Castle, uh, but people don't necessarily want to charge it. You know, they're going to have to, to tie it up. But it is three dreadnoughts and a couple characters that can fight, so you can defend yourself a bit from getting tied up in melee. Of course, you're not going to kill a 30 orc horde with uh, three dreadnoughts power fists, but you'll put some damage on them. And this army's good at overwatch, so having all these fire, firepower is you know, going to prevent those charges a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to jump right into basically six five-man squads of intercessors with stalker bolt rifles. These guys are going to walk around, tag objectives. Uh, they can move and shoot their stalker bolt rifle with no penalty. And they're at plus one AP because we're never leaving the Devastator Doctrine. And uh, that's the army. So it's 30 troops, four characters, and five vehicles. Not super expensive to buy, and especially with the easy build uh, dreadnoughts. And I don't think anybody honestly cares what actual gun your intercessors are carrying unless you're mixing and matching the guns in your army. But if your intercessors are all equipped with stalker bolt rifles, I don't think it really matters if you're using the ones from the Dark Imperium box set, which I will be. And I don't care if my opponent has a problem with it because I'm an adult and I don't care. <laughs> so moving on with the, there's a few things in here I'm missing and missing out on, I feel. There's the Whirlwind or Tech Marine Thunderfire Cannon. I think both of them are a great choice. Sitting in the back, re-rolling ones with no character support, plus one AP, stratagem to double shoot. I do think you could drop something here and uh, definitely include a Whirlwind or a Thunderfire Cannon. They are non-Primaris, but it's so easy to convert a Whirlwind out of a Rhino that I might just do that and include it in the future. Like I said, if you need to shave some points, you can take your intercessors, maybe some of them, and downgrade them to scouts, which is honestly probably a good idea to have some middle board control to prevent deep strike charges and to jump and whatever, green gene stealer cult. Uh, if you had the extra points, you could also maybe upgrade some of your intercessors to uh, the infiltrators. So that's cool. Uh, eliminators, I think, would be a good choice here. So maybe if you don't want three dreadnoughts, you take some eliminators, save up some points there. Uh, you know, once again, you're plus one AP, you're moving and shooting, and you're rerolling ones to hit on all heavy weapons for the whole game because you'll have no reason to go into the assault doctrine or the tactical doctrine. You're going to start in the Devastator doctrine, and you're going to stay in the Devastator doctrine, and that's the name of the Iron Hands. Now, we'll get into probably making a video on the most obvious powerhouse choices, Triple Repulsor, Triple Repulsor Executioner, uh, you know, Super Dreadnoughts that you all make Warlord type. You know, you give them all the character keyword with stratagems, and uh, you can't be targeted. Uh, I don't really play with Forge World at all. If I was taking this army to a tournament, I would maybe consider like a Forge World Dreadnought or a Forge World Whirlwind, right? But I don't play with it, so I don't really feel like buying it. And I'm kind of waiting to maybe if they upgrade the Forge World book, or not upgrade, update, release a new Imperial Armor or whatever type book with updated rules, maybe I would buy that book at that point and include it just for like when I play at events. But I don't play a ton of events. I mostly play on the weekends with friends. And I play a lot of different games. So I'm not playing 40K like every single week. Uh, and like I said, so this army, I think you're not going to lose all your friends, but I think it's going to have some potential to win some games. And... Not terribly hard to get it set up on the table. Hopefully I'll have some battle report type recaps for you soon. And that's all I got for you. Let me know what you think about the Iron Hands and what's the combo you're looking forward to using. Peace.